Hey, what's going on everyone? Sly here with Flo. First of all, thank you for everyone that joined the live stream. Over 600 people, first time. It's kind of, uh, you know, kind of a little technical difficulties. Technical difficulty, you know, we had to sure. do it three times, but uh, it got in and thank you for everyone that joined. And, you know, a lot of talk, when we were on the chat, a lot of Niner fans are kind of hating on Purdy and really hating on Kyle Shanahan, man. So I think that was a topic that everyone was like talking about. So, besides Ronnie Bell. Yeah, besides <laughs> Ronnie Bell, man. But... We were listening to Mark Schlereth earlier on his podcast, and he talked about Kyle that needed to step up, needed to step up his game, his play call. It was kind of interesting because me and you were talking about that during the game, and hearing him talk about it, I was like, "All right, finally someone that's kind of saying something." You know that, you know, not these all these coaches are not geniuses how it is, but let's check this out real quick, and we'll talk about it. Tell me, are they going to be healthy toward the end of the season? Or offensively, are they going to be healthy toward the end of the season? If, if you tell me they're going to be healthy toward the end of the season, then I would say, yeah, they've got a chance if they win that division to get in. I mean, I think there's no question about that. So that would be that would be my takeaway. Like right now, are they playing well enough to do that? Absolutely not. They're not playing well enough to do that right now. But if they're healthy toward the end of the season, listen, Juwan Jennings to me is one of their top just quote unquote football players as a wide receiver. I think he does everything well. Um, he'll block. He makes ridiculous catches. Like he does a lot of things exceptionally well. So I think Jawan Jennings will fill that role that Brandon Ayuk had. You know, obviously you'll get you'll get uh, Debo back at some point. So I think that's you know I, I, Debo will be back. He'll be healthy. Um, you know, Kittle and Usechek. This comes down like Mike. I, I would say this. Like I think it comes down here in the next couple of weeks as you're trying to survive. And Dallas is no great shakes, right? They can't defend the run or any of that stuff. But I think it really comes down to Kyle Shanahan. How do you adjust your offense? How do you create opportunities for your quarterback? And how do you create offense when your offensive structure and the players that execute that offensive structure are not available to you? Like we have to watch you kind of manipulate and change and do those things. And listen, man, we always talk about these great coaches in the National Football League and how they, you know, oh my, this guy changes offense and this guy changes this and this guy is amazing. How the Miami Dolphins look without Tua? Mm-hmm. How's Coach Capri Pants? How, how's that offense? That uh, offense that oh my gosh, the motions and the speed and the you know athleticism and oh uh, they're setting on like they're creating new offense and man they look great. What do they score? About twelve points a game without Tua? Mm-hmm. Is that what they score? So you know let's like I always say, man, football and junior yeah, football and genius are mutually exclusive events. You don't play or coach in the league if you're a genius. You don't. We're a bunch of PE majors, for crying out loud, right? <laughs> I always think about how did football get invented? Well, a couple of guys, you know, got a pizza, had some beers, got drunk, got their crayons out, and started scribbling on the pizza box. Like, what do we line up over here and we fight for this real estate? And you hit me in the head, and then I hit you back in the head. And then eventually we push the ball over the goal line. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. You know, I mean. It's not. There's not a bunch of. There's not a bunch of Mensa candidates playing this game. That that's just not how it works. All right, man. So he's talking about that during the game. Me and you, both of us, were like, "Dude, come on, Kyle, run the screen to the running back. You run bootleg. Run, do something. Stop doing this vanilla shotgun seven step drop. You know that's just weak, especially with our love our dudes out. You know, you got to do kind of what Andy Reid was doing." When Pat Mahomes was struggling early in that game, he was running everything that week. I kept saying a run, you know, with the play action screens, jet sweeps. sweeps. That's what Andy Reid was doing. Kyle did not do that. But what do you think about Mark Slayer talking about that? And do you agree with him? Yeah, man, he's 100% right. A lot of the times these coaches get a little bit more credit than they deserve. I, I always say usually it comes down to the players first. Like the coaches, for my my thing for the coaches is building a culture and kind of just getting guys to buy in every single year. But there are games where you got to drop those X's and O's and win your team maybe one to two games. And Kyle Shanahan, I don't think he's ever really had to do that because, like I said, people use the same argument on Purdy that he has all this talent around him. Kyle Shanahan has the same damn talent around him. So I feel he gets away with a lot of wins just because, obviously, normally we're stacked. Obviously, right now we're dealing with injury. But this is when he's supposed to really make his money while we have these guys who are, what, like, fourth fifth sixth on the depth chart especially at the receiving core he has to figure out how to get these guys open 
understand what their strengths and weaknesses are and play to those things. And that's what a great coach would do. Hopefully Kyle Shanahan figures it out because we need to do this against Dallas, who, like Mark Sarah also uh, noted, they're not playing the best, too. So it's not like we're at a disadvantage, 100% disadvantage. They're kind of struggling, too. So it's anyone's game. Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy, too, both have the game plan for this game because we do need this one. And I really like what Mark Schlerer talked about. He's like, oh, Mike McDaniel, all this genius. Look at what they're doing with their backup quarterback. And that's kind of, let's be honest, that's kind of Kyle Shanahan, man, with all these other guys. Brian Hoyer we had, um, Nick Mullins. Jeez, uh, like, <laughs> the list goes on and on of just damn quarterbacks we've had. And they were mediocre. Kyle wasn't be called a genius with that. C.J. Beathard, like, when was Kyle, like, he was a genius with those guys? He wasn't, man. You know, when we had Purdy, that's when I was like, oh, shoot, you know, Kyle, he's the man. You know, obviously, when he had the MVP, Matt Ryan, oh, Kyle's the man. But now, I mean, Kyle's got to step it up. He's got to be creative here. Got to be like Andy Reid. Got to do these different little gadget plays to get us going. You know, when things aren't going well, you got to freaking mix it up, man. You can't be doing the same as BS calls, shotgun formation at the freaking two yard line like we've been doing for the past, I don't, since the season started. You know, you got to mix it up. I know we don't have Christian McCaffrey. I know we don't have the bow cow there. So you got to change it up. You got to, I don't know, man. And I was watching the QB school with uh, JT O'Sullivan today. And he was talking about, he's like, dude, like even these freaking protection like his Colin McKibbins getting work Jake Brendel getting destroyed he's like damn man look at the center just getting destroyed again and obviously Purdy didn't have a great game I'm gonna say it was his worst game of his NFL career I know a lot of fans in the chat were saying oh what are you guys gonna do excuse now for Purdy you know yeah I'm gonna admit it he wasn't his best game it was his worst game it was worse than that Ravens game because that Ravens game we just put up 500 yards offense yeah he had that five interceptions but we were driving down the field every damn drive this one we weren't doing it so he's got to take blame for that but Where's the blame on Kyle Shanahan? Kyle Shanahan, he's got to, he's got to do it, man. He can't be this freaking vanilla ass. I was back Mike Nolan, man. It would seem like Mike Nolan and Mike Singletary, Jimmy Ray as our offensive coordinator. That's what it seemed like uh, on on Sunday, and I was just like, what the hell? This is like bullshit, man. We got to do something. I like Kyle when he when 2019 with Jimmy Garoppolo, very average ass quarterback, maybe above average. He was running every damn thing we had man we were doing reverses almost three times a game screens with Moser and Brita it was all the time it was just beautiful stuff but now you don't see that we're not going under center anymore like to me it's like come on Kyle I know we have a great group of guys but dude now's the time you got to go back to the basics like that's what I'm seeing out there and Mark Slaris right man Really, not you really. Uh, geniuses are not really their coach. Maybe I don't know. Maybe a few of them, like Andy Reid, um, I guess Bill Belichick. But other than that, man, there's not many out there that are like, oh, this guy's a genius. So we'll see how he does, man. He without Ayuk, probably without Debo. I don't know if Jennings is playing. So let's see if he does anything different. If not, then we're screwed. I'm gonna say it right now, we're screwed because it it brought me flashbacks of the same old shit when Alex Smith was quarterback with Mike Nolan and single terror and shotgun every damn play. And it was like, fuck, you know, you're going to score 17 points a game. Like you knew it, you knew you were going to score. Not, not, you know, we're going to score a lot. So hopefully we change things around and Kyle gets creative. He has to, he has to reinvent himself because right now it's not looking that great. Yeah, man. Right now it does look like the, the chips are against us right now or the cards are against us, but we, we gotta we gotta see what uh happens this week because obviously like you said dallas is coming in it's pretty even but yeah kyle shanahan and brock purdy both have to step up and we just gotta get out of that damn shotgun we do not have the offensive line to freaking run mm -hmm. shotgun that, that it makes no sense at all play to our strengths and stay away from that damn shotgun formation we should be fine to be honest i think this game as long as we win the turnover battle that's what we're the, You're about this game against the Cowboys. The Cowboys, yeah. Okay, but, but after that, it's brutal <laughs> yeah, schedule. But I'm saying, you, you want to win the first yeah, you game. Win the first yeah, game yeah, yeah, you want to win the first game. You got to go one game at a time, so you got to get this Cowboy one. And like I said, I think they got to clean up turnovers because obviously we don't have our stars, so we're not going to be able to make quite as many plays. So win the turnover battle and just, I don't know, get creative like you said. Bring, bring out all the little bells and whistles for this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 2021, man, um, Kyle did have – he had Debo Samuel who kind of led us that playoff. Remember Carried, we, we yeah. started up – well, we're three and five, right? Mm -hmm. and then we went to a freaking Chicago. It was a screen pass to Debo, yeah. and he fucking took it like 80 yards, and that turned our season around. Yeah. Like, who's it going to be now? I have no idea. You know, that that was a vanilla-ass play. You know, it was a damn freaking quick wide receiver screen, which Kyle loves running, which 
I get it, but damn, use some run, uh, running back screens, you know? And if you're going to do a damn screen, do it to Jacob Cowing, dude. Jacob Cowing, he's a fast-ass mother effer. So you got to find the guy who you're going to do this stuff with because right now, you know, it that offense, it was pathetic. I get it. It was one of the best um, defenses out there. Yeah. But damn, come on, Kyle, against all these great defenses against Schwartz got worked. Against Brian Flores, work. Spagnola, fucking work, dude. It's like all these damn great defensive coordinators were getting work. So obviously you're not a freaking genius if you're getting worked by all these damn coordinators. Do I want Kyle to get fired? No. And I know a lot of Niner fans are getting pissed off at me for saying that um, because he led us to two Super Bowls. But we're not going to fire him no matter what people say. He's not going to get fired. But he needs to step his ass up and call it some some game some great plays, man. I don't give a what the hell you can do. Will you do that Chris McCaffrey throw in the backfield so he throws it to a damn receiver for a touchdown? Do something creative, man. Do those trick plays because fuck right now, it, it, it's not looking that great, man. It's not looking that great. So Kyle's got to step up his game. He has to step up his game if he want any chance at winning this damn division. First of all, and making it in the playoffs and making a run. So. All right, well, you guys let us in the comments what you guys think about Mark Slayer's take on Kyle Shanahan. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. See you all next time. Peace. Peace.